In this chapter so far, we discussed quite a bit the 01 knapsack set. In this section, instead, we're gonna be talking about the traveling salesman polytope. In particular, we will consider the symmetric traveling salesman problem, or TSP. And we've already seen uh, this problem in chapter two. In particular, we saw the Danzig Fulkerson Johnson formulation, which is the most successful formulation in practice. So let us consider a non directed graph, and in particular, we look at a complete graph on n nodes. So here's an example with uh, seven nodes. This is the Danzig Fulkerson Johnson formulation that we saw. So let's remember how it looks like. So we have binary variables xe associated with the edges of the graph and the variable xe will be equal to 1 whenever the edge e is part of the optimal Hamiltonian cycle. In our objective function we minimize the total length of the Hamiltonian cycle and then our constraints are the degree constraints for every node exactly two edges in the Hamiltonian cycle are adjacent to this node. And then we have the subtour elimination constraints, which we discussed in length in section two. And they are the following. For every subset of nodes with cardinality between two and n minus two, we have that the sum of all the variables of the edges in delta of s is greater than or equal to two. The traveling salesman polytope is the convexal of the feasible solutions to this uh, integer programming problem. It turns out that subtour elimination constraints are fundamental to define the traveling salesman polytope. In fact, this theorem says that every subtour elimination constraint defines a facet of the traveling salesman polytope if you have at least four nodes. And I leave this proof as an exercise for you. The traveling salesman problem is an NP-hard problem. So as always, the first thing we do is look at the standard LP relaxation. And here it is. Everything we did was just replace the binary constraints with xc between zero and one for every edge. This feasible region is a polytope and it's called the subtour elimination polytope. And of course, it contains the traveling salesman polytope. In general, the traveling salesman polytope is strictly contained in the subtour elimination polytope. In any case, solving this linear programming problem is itself a challenge, and the reason is that we have exponentially many subtour elimination constraints. Since they're exponentially many, for reasonably sized problems, you will never be able to write them down all explicitly. In fact, in this case, you would be better off by just simply enumerating all the solutions, all the binary vectors, and solving the original integer programming problem by enumeration. But we've already discussed a way to deal with the linear programming problems with a huge number of constraints. Namely, we start by solving the LP relaxation obtained by throwing away all your exponentially many constraints. And in this way, you obtain a solution X bar. At this point, the idea is that the linear programming problem is iteratively strengthened by adding one by one subtour elimination constraints that are violated by the current solution. In order to obtain such an iterative algorithm, at every iteration, you need to solve what is called the separation problem. Namely, you need to either prove that X bar satisfies all the subtour elimination constraints or you need to find one subtour elimination constraint that is violated by X bar so that you can add such a constraint to strengthen the linear programming problem, which will be solved at the next iteration. So now let's focus on this separation problem and let's see how we can formulate it. Similarly to what we've seen for the NAPSA cover inequalities, we will formulate this problem as a combinatorial optimization problem. So the subtour elimination constraint for a set S of nodes takes exactly this form. In this case, we already have that the right-hand side is a constant. Therefore, deciding if there exists a violated subtour elimination constraint reduced to just minimizing the left-hand side of this inequality over all subset S of V with cardinality between two and then minus two. And we're interested in understanding if this optimal value zeta is greater than or equal to two or not. In fact, if it is greater than or equal to two, then for every set S, we have that this sum is greater than or equal to two, 
Therefore, X bar satisfies all the subtural elimination constraints. On the other hand, if zeta is strictly smaller than 1, then there is at least one violated subtural elimination constraint. Furthermore, the optimal set S star in this minimization problem gives you one such violated constraint. Therefore, we can now add this constraint to the LP formulation in order to obtain a stronger relaxation at the next iteration. Therefore, the key in being able to apply this uh, cutting plane technique uh, lies in being able to solve uh, this optimization problem that gives you zeta. Now, how can we interpret this minimization problem? Well, think about our original graph, VE, with the edge weights given by x bar e for every edge. And remember, at this point, x bar is a vector that we have explicitly, so we can use it as edge weights in the graph. At this point, the quantity sum of the x bar e for every e in delta of s is exactly the weight of the cut delta of s in our undirected graph. Therefore, this minimization problem asks us to find a cut of minimum weight in the graph G. Well, except for a little detail, in fact, we have among our constraints that the set S has cardinality between 2 and n minus 2. However, in general, a cut could have cardinality of S also equal to 1 or n minus 1. However, in this case, this doesn't matter. And the reason is that if the cardinality of S is 1 or n minus 1, then the sum of the x bar e over delta of S is guaranteed to be equal to 2 due to our degree constraints. Therefore, the optimal value of this problem is strictly smaller than 2 if and only if the cut of minimum weight in G has value strictly smaller than 2. So now the question is, how can we solve this minimum weight cut problem? Well, this reminds us, of course, of the minimum ST cut problem that we saw in chapter 4. However, there are a couple of uh, fundamental differences between the two problems. Well, first, here we're dealing with an undirected graph, while there we were dealing with a directed graph. And secondly, here we're searching for any cut in our graph, while in the previous setting we were searching for an ST cut. Therefore, a cut that separates two specific nodes given in input S and T. Fortunately, there is a simple way to solve our minimum weight cut problem by solving a number of uh, minimum capacity ST cut problems that we've already seen how to solve just by solving a linear programming problem. The idea is very simple. Given your original graph G, we construct a directed graph D by introducing arcs UV and VU for every original edge UV in our graph. Note that in this slide I'm using always the green color for our current graph that we're dealing with and whenever instead I talk about the directed graph that we construct, this is highlighted in blue. Now we need to define the capacities in the directed graph and I set the capacities of the two arcs we just defined to be exactly the weight of the original edge. Thanks to these definitions, you can now check that the capacity of a cut delta out of S in the d-graph is equal to the weight of the cut delta of S for every subset S of nodes. What we can do now is find the ST cut of minimum capacity for every pair ST of nodes. These are a total number of essentially n square minimum capacity ST cuts problem. And it turns out you can show that the cut in D of minimum capacity among all of these n square problems gives you a cut of minimum weight in G. Therefore, this gives us a polynomial time algorithm to find zeta. So this is a fundamental difference between separation of subtural elimination constraints and the separation of knapsack cover inequalities that we discussed earlier on. 
In fact, while separation of uh, cover inequality is NP-hard, we have just seen that separation of uh, subtural elimination constraints can be done in polynomial time. Even though this can be done in polynomial time, in practice this, is normal, this algorithm is normally used as a last resort. The fact is the following, that there exist simpler heuristics that work much faster, which are not guaranteed to find a violated inequality, but it's worth running them because if they do find a violated inequality, they find it extremely fast. On the other hand, if they don't find a violated inequality, as a last resort, we can always use our polynomial time algorithm that we discussed. So let me give you an example of such an heuristic. Define the subset of edges E bar corresponding to the edges with X bar E strictly larger than zero. Now in linear time, you can understand if the graph V E bar is connected or not. If it's not connected, then let a star be a set of nodes that induces a connected component. Such an star immediately gives you a violated subtural elimination constraint. In fact, obviously the sum of the xe for e in delta of a star is equal to zero, which is clearly strictly smaller than two. For the moment, this concludes our discussion on the phases of the symmetric traveling salesman polytope.